The Garden Report is brought to you by FanDuel, the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Hey, Bobby Manning here. Welcome to the Garden Report after the Celtics beat the Sixers 125-119 with a strong fourth quarter after Jason Tatum's ejection. We got into it, Joe Sway, pretty uh, in-depth on the show, but yeah, that's right. you didn't love the ejection at all. You No. Couldn't stand it. Well, the, the way you just worded that, it makes it seem like like I, I, I think the refs completely botched it. But I, I, that's not the whole story, if you ask me. No, you're you're mad with the way Tatum. Yes, the situation. yes, absolutely. Uh, my my gripe with Tatum is um, give those guys their space in that moment. And, and, and again, I don't think you know complaining about it or having to have all their undivided attention just so you can see, just so you can explain your part I, I don't think he, he earned that you know like you got to respect the officials man like when they're doing that huddle thing like you guys wait give it a second and then plead your case but nothing about that is gonna help you when you're interrupting these guys when you're obviously not probably not asking politely even though he tells us that he didn't swear all right well that's the case okay so be it maybe you didn't just quote unquote disrespect them but screaming at these guys or at least trying to get your point across while they're trying to talk to one another i mean it's not an easy job to be an official and again i'm not trying to say like oh man like you, the officials you, you, people don't give them enough credit or this that no, no it's not about that it's just about the, this, this pattern with tatum and, and i feel like it's, it's gonna get to a point where he's gonna truly believe that he's not in the wrong and that's not always the case that's clearly how he felt tonight here's his reaction and explanation of what went down bro stuff what do you do in the minutes after you're rejected before you chill and watch the movie. Again, I wasn't that <laughs> mad. Like, <laughs> don't put that narrative out there. I didn't throw nothing. I said what I said. There was no magic words. I didn't cuss. Assistant coaches right there, you heard me. I don't know. They, maybe they didn't want me to play tonight. They was eager to get me out of there. And I walked back calmly. I was, Sat in my chair, got some ice. I was not mad. I didn't throw anything. I was just like, it was like a joke. I, you know, I was like, I had to laugh it off. Uh, so no, I ain't cry, I ain't throw anything. Got my ice, watched the rest of the game, watched us win, um, and got ready. FanDuel is the exclusive wagering partner of the CLNS Media Network. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets. With any winning $5 money line bet, FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So, as I said on the show, I'm not frustrated with the ejection. In fact, I don't think he's been complaining nearly as often this year. Right. I didn't like the fact that he put his team in a position to lose, didn't play well up until that, and the reaction seemed to stem from his bad play. Yeah. Uh, can you ramp down the turnovers, can you figure out how to protect the ball? And he did score aggressively at different points in this game through the midway section after a brutal second quarter for the Celtics after leading by 10 early. But this is a game they could have easily lost, and as Al Horford said in the locker room after, it would have been awful if they lost. Absolutely, and without Al Horford, there's a probably good chance they do lose. I mean, he was doing a little bit of everything between the defense, you know, the two blocks at the rim that were incredible, really got this crowd going, and then getting it done as a playmaker and as, you know, a, a, a guy who can get hot from behind the three-point arc, and that was the case in the fourth quarter. So, you know, you survived this, and as a team, you, you've seen, you're seeing the Celtics show their resiliency. I mean, that's something that we, we, we're seeing early in the first three weeks of the season. I mean, that's exactly why they have the best record in the NBA on top of the talent, right? Because obviously when you have nights where you don't have Porzingis, you don't have key guys, they're able to put together a win. And you can say the same thing about the Philadelphia 76ers, you know, not having their guys. What if even Embiid's in this, right? The Celtics win this game? Probably not. Do, do, they, do the referees throw Tatum out? I mean, if you ask Tatum, he's probably going to say probably not, but I, I think it's deeper than that. Again, I, I really do think the, the the technical foul in the first quarter obviously is the reason why he gets tossed because if you ask the officials, it wasn't one of those situations where he had completely crossed the line that he had earned a double technical. So, you know, Tatum's got to remember this stuff. Like, you you earned that first technical foul, you got to be careful here. And again, you know, it's the body language. It's the, it's the uh, approach. That's what bothers me. I mean, if this was a one-on-one -on -one conversation and then all of a sudden he just got tossed, that's a different situation. This is a case where the referees are trying to do their job. They're trying to huddle up and, and come up with a decision, or at least a conversation, and he's, he's butting in. You know, I, I just don't think it's, it's the right way to do things. You mentioned Embiid being out with the illness. Tyrese Maxey misses this one as well. The most frustrating thing, obviously, is the letdown against the lesser opponent, disrespecting the opponent, whatever right. you want to refer to it as. That clearly happened. And, 
Yeah, some of the veterans on the team, like Horford, always does. Drew was willing to say it tonight. Admit that's a thing. Yeah, no, and it it's is. something that afflicts this team in a frustrating way because right. it's multiple seasons of this. Drew said he's felt like they've overcome that a couple times now, and that's probably true tonight, the latest example. But you hate to see it, especially after Joe talked all week about bottling up what they did in that second half against Chicago. Right. You know, playing to run up the score. They could never build a lead in this one, and part of that's Philly hitting crazy shots, uh, as Horford mentioned post game. But they did not play with the right effort. They did not start this game the right way. No, I agree. I agree for sure. You know, they they, they were lucky in the sense of how they started that first quarter. I mean, scoring what 40 plus points, shooting 70 percent, making all those three pointers. What was it? 12 threes but they or had eight, eight threes? Turnovers. But they had eight turnovers. I mean, so then you look at what. Philadelphia did, and essentially they were seeking a high percentage of shots. They were playing the Celtics, you know, tough defensively, you know, forcing some of those turnovers and finishing in transition. I mean, that's exactly what kept them in it. And of course, those, like you said, hitting a lot of those tough uh, three pointers. But you know, going into that fourth quarter, you, you, it's a big gamble. I mean, you could have easily lost this when you see Tatum get ejected and that fourth quarter, especially with that lineup, what was it, Derek White and you know, Hauser, Pritchard, Pritcher, Jalen. I mean, Jalen all of a sudden is taking these, these uh, you know, turnarounds and the, the, someone in the paint, but he's not going towards the basket, kind of falling into these traps, these defensive traps that the, that the 76ers had, you know, placed him in. But then all of a sudden, those final two minutes, Tatum checks back in. You're starting to see him, uh, like, something clicked in his mind. He's like, okay, let me just continue to just drive, drive, drive. And all of a sudden, he's getting to the free throw line. You know, he's getting to the free throw line. All of a sudden, he's getting that momentum. And then that one, you know, flagrant foul that obviously he didn't agree with, and he just snaps and gets himself tossed. Could have cost him the game. Fortunately, Celtics do step up and win this one. Uh, leading up to the in-season tournament, knockout round. Yeah, man. Opener. This is a big on one. On Monday. This we'll preview one. that in our next video here. Stay tuned for that. Uh, over the weekend, and uh, Celtics have a nice weekend off here to prepare for it. So uh, we'll take a couple days off as well. We'll have remote coverage of that Indiana-Boston game on the post-game show. All of us should be in for this one. A great game. Uh, and for now, the Celtics beat the Sixers tonight, 125-119, despite Tatum's ejection. What do you think of that? What do you think about their overall approach to this game? Let us know below. For J Joe Swift and Bone, uh, Bobby Manning, this has been the Garn Report. You know, I've been looking for the best deal on Celtics tickets. And with over 28 million downloads, SeatGeek is the number one rated ticketing app. There are more than 70,000 events every single day on SeatGeek, including concerts, sports festivals, and more. You can use my code DREAMERSPRO for $20 off tickets at SeatGeek. That's $20 off your first purchase with promo code DREAMERSPRO. Make sure you check the link in the description to download the app.